Sunday afternoon, 29 October 1956, the Delta Wing supersonic B-58 moved for the first time under its own power. This occurred in a preliminary taxi maneuver which tested the braking characteristics, turning radius, and general overall ground handling characteristics of the B-58. To this date, the airplane had undergone an Air Force Safety Board inspection, ground vibration checks, engine runs to full military power, and numerous other checkouts, all of which proved its readiness for the taxi test phase of operation. The conveyor flight crew for this number one B-58 is pilot B.A. Erickson, flight observer J.D. McEachern, and observer C.L. Harrison. Erickson, who also flew the first B-36 and YB-60, is manager of the flight department at Convair's Fort Worth Division. At approximately 16.30 hours, the B-58 with flight crew on board was pushed out of engine run station number two and towed to the starting position for the first taxi maneuver. Taxi screens were attached to the jets during this test to protect them against foreign object damage. The starting point for this test was the east-west taxi strip at the north end of the runway. The airplane was joined there by the ground support equipment and the fire trucks. Canopies were closed at approximately 1,700 hours. Engines were started. And as darkness closed in, the B-58 moved onto the runway and underwent its first taxi maneuver. This test proved that the B-58's ground handling characteristics were excellent, and the airplane was given the green light to proceed with taxi run. One week later, on 5 November 1956, the B-58 moved out of engine run station number two under its own power and made its second taxi run. This was a low speed run made from north to south at approximately 40 knots. Excessive brake temperature, which developed in the aft inboard duels of the left main gear during the return taxi, caused a tire to blow after the airplane had come to a stop on the taxi strip. As soon as the wheel had cooled, ground crews came in to remove the tire and determine the cause of failure. Examination revealed that excessive temperature in the wheel was caused by a brake which didn't fully release. The tire change was completed in approximately 20 minutes and the airplane was towed to the development hangar building for correction of the brake system discrepancy.
The first high-speed taxi was made on Wednesday morning, 7 November, 1956. This run was made at a top speed of approximately 92 knots. The nose of the airplane was lifted to takeoff attitude for a very short time. Then power was cut and the drag chute deployed. There were no major discrepancies reported on this run. The second high-speed taxi was made after dark on 8 November, 1956. The entire weight of the aircraft was lifted from the landing gear on this run, which was made at 138 knots. On 10 November 1956, the B-58 made its third high-speed taxi. This run was made from north to south and reached a top speed of 148 knots. The only discrepancy encountered was a minor leak in the hydraulic system of the power control linkage package. On Sunday afternoon, 11 November 1956, while America celebrated Veterans Day, the B-58 taxied to the takeoff position for its first flight. Ground testing was now complete. Specifications have been met, and the B-58 was ready for its first flight. The weather for this occasion was perfect. Skies were clear, the air was mild, and there was a slight breeze from the south. Chase aircraft for this flight consisted of a Convair YF-102A, which was used for observation purposes, and an F-94C, which carried the aerial cameras. At approximately 14.39 hours, the chase planes released their brakes, cut in their afterburners, and took to the air. After holding just long enough for the chase airplanes to move into position, the B-58 released its brakes and began the takeoff roll. Afterburners were not used. The B-58 was airborne at exactly 1441 hours after a ground roll of approximately 3300 feet. Air speed at takeoff was 160 knots. The takeoff was routine and the climb was steady.
special flight data from the B-58 was telemetered back to a ground recording system in the flight test department. This information was monitored throughout the flight and recorded for future study. Information obtained here is supplemented by other flight data recorded on board the airplane. Future flights will be covered in a similar manner. After takeoff, the B-58 with landing gear extended climbed to an altitude of 10,000 feet. The high landing gear is necessary so that the long fuselage can develop the ground angle required for takeoff and landing. Gear was retracted while the airplane was still at the 10,000 foot level. Operation was quick and smooth. Climb was then made to 20,000 feet, where the airplane was felt out at a speed of 0.7 Mach. At 15.19 hours, exactly 38 minutes after takeoff, the B-58 settled on the runway to successfully complete its first flight. The drag chute was deployed immediately upon touchdown, and the airplane was brought to a short stop with a minimum amount of brake. The B-58 had come through its first flight with ease. Performance of engines and airplane had been routine. The B-58 supersonic bomber nosed into the engine run station at approximately 1524 hours to conclude its first airborne excursion.
The mechanical reactions of this airplane to its maiden flight are recorded on tape. But the reaction of the human element to the B-58 will be found on the faces of the crew. This is only the beginning. There will be many hours of grueling flight tests for the B-58 before it can be properly appraised as a weapon for the U.S. Air Force. But based on the first flight, it is reasonable to predict that the Convair supersonic B-58 will write a new chapter in America's mastery of the sky.